White line, trout line, sitting on a pipeline, waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread and mustard greens, that's how we live and it sure feels fine. Well, you can't change us, that's the way we know. Cajun people live like they did long ago. So join the fun, live off the land, cause there ain't nothing better than a Louisiana man. Trap line sitting on a pipeline waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread, mustard greens. That's how we live, and it sure feels fine. Hey everybody, welcome to Cajun Living and Cooking, and my name is Rodney Dupree, and today we've got a treat for y'all. We're at the Galvez Hardware Store for the second annual Black Iron Pot Cook-Off. Now this year's for the Dreams Come True Foundations. Great cause. We got 12 cooks. We got a DJ. We're gonna be giving away a quilt. It's gonna be some fun stuff, y'all. And Cajun Living and Cooking's fixing to start right about now. Now. To start now. Start right now. Start right about now. About to start right now. Starting right about now. Cajun Living and Cooking about to start right now. Cajun Living and Cooking starts about right now. Good morning. I'm Dennis Gomez, better known as Julio. My assistant, Jim Moon. Good morning. We're part of the Sandy Ridge Brewholics. And today we're cooking for the Dreams Come True Network. And we are preparing our almost world famous pork roast and ribeye sauce pecan. Big chunks of pork, ribeyes, Lots of seasoning, first place right here. Well, I hate to give all my secrets away, but I tell you what. Only people in TV land will know. Okay. We start off with premium meat. I take a pork loin, we trim the fat off of it, and we cook that fat down. And that's the only fat that is in this pot that okay. we cook off the, off the uh, trim off the pork loin in the ribeyes. Gotcha. We cut it up, we brown the meat, pull that out of the pot, and then we take in our tomato paste. And the secret there is you put your tomato paste in and you cook it down almost like you're doing a roux. Yeah. Okay, until you get it almost a brownish color, you know. Then you just add, add your ingredients, you know, your rotels, your whole tomatoes. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, there's no water in this pot. Oh, uh, no okay. water at all. So this, this gravy is going to stick to the pasta. Gotcha. Okay, it's not going to be a runny plate. Okay. okay? And it looks really, really rich. It it is. You know, I, I actually I cooked this a couple of weeks ago, uh -huh. and uh, the, for the neighborhood, and they convinced me to to cook this for the uh, for the cook off. So we uh, that's where the entry come from. Right. And this is my first cook off. I've never I've never entered a contest before. Uh huh. You know, and uh, but I think we're gonna do okay. Well, we couldn't ask for a better day and You're a better right. foundation to be doing for. I agree. The I, dreams I come agree. true foundation for the kids, y'all. How y'all doing today? My name's Paul. Greg. Part of the Sandy Ridge Roo Holics. Again, we're over here cooking for the Dreams Come True Fellows. Make a wish doing a little pork stew with potatoes and carrots. Uh, we're going to blow everybody away. I want you to look at my, my trophy from our last cook off. <laughs> so we kind of used to this. We have fun and come out here and play and cook. Raise a little money for the kids and have a good time. All right, y'all, got two more cooks. Let's get their names. I'm Paul. Greg. Now, what you cooking, Paul? We're cooking a uh, pork stew with uh, potatoes and carrots and uh, just a little concoction. Instead of using beef, I use pork, get a little better flavor into it. Yeah, you know, yeah. Right there and you, you, you know, you just do like a beef stew. You brown your pork up real good and uh -huh. just let it cook down. I got some ham hocks in there and a little pork uh -huh. uh, bones. And they cook them all down and I'll peel it out off and then Oh, about an hour or so before it's ready to cook, put the potatoes in corn and let it cook down and get it all good and tender. So you got just about everything in the pot now. That's it. You got all everything's in the pot except for my potatoes and my corn. It don't take that long to cook. Just let all that meat get good and soft, uh -huh. good and tender. And uh, that's okay. it. And then put the T-bone all in ham hocks and you got the old pork bones in there. I'll get them. This gives flavor. They don't bone bones, yeah. cook them bones down, give them a little more flavor. 
Now and you, you know, served out of a rice or? I serve a little rice, yeah, I put it over a little rice. Okay. You know, you, you've been some, cooking this recipe a while? Some, some. Oh yeah, like I said, it's just a beef stew. Instead of, I didn't find I like to use a little pork, it's a little better flavor than the beef. Yeah. You know, yeah. take a couple of Boston butts, cut them up like you're doing a jambalaya, season them up, brown them down real good. I put a little flour on them, make a little roux. Right. When I fry them up, take them out, and then you put your vegetables, your onions, and let them cook down, and then do your other uh, bell pepper, celery, garlic, everything else. Put it all in, use some stock, let, just, let it cook down until it gets good and tender. Then you add your vegetables in there, and then you put a little rice on it, get you a good beer, or a glass of wine, and uh, you know. And we're uh, we the Sandy Ridge Rue Holics number one. All right. Like number two to losers. <laughs> gotcha. You got my mouth watering over here with this, man. You got my mouth watering with this. It's going to be pretty good. We're going we gonna to see, you know. We uh, we cooked in there. He got he got second potato. I got third to steak at the other cook off. So, yes, indeed. Uh, <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, I'm gonna check back with y'all a little bit. Thank y'all. Right, appreciate, appreciate it. Y'all have a good day. All right, Burton, tell me what you got in the pot. I got pork neck bone uh -huh. that we cooking with. Uh, I got onions, garlic, the uh, rotel, uh, Mushroom. uh, mushrooms, and we just let it make its own gravy. And you said no roux. No roux. I don't make a roux. Gotcha. And like I told you, it's a poor man's gravy. Yeah. So, so how and, long? How long does it take? How long does it generally take? It probably about three and a half hours. Okay. And then we can cut it down, and it, it'll just fall off the bone. Gotcha. Gotcha. Put it over rice, and you eat it like that. It smells really good, man. <laughs> but well, that's it, y'all. Pork neck bone gravy. You don't get that in every household, y'all. And it's. I think this is gonna be a contender. I'm gonna let y'all. I mean. <laughs> I'm gonna let y'all get back to it, and we're gonna right. check back with you. All right, you come get a plate of it too. I will. <laughs> thank y'all. All right, I'm Leonard, and this is Judy, and we're cooking a little sausage comp for the Dreams Come True Foundation. Uh, today I'm cooking the deer, pork, rabbit, and sausage sausage comp. But we're hoping it's gonna be good. We're in it to win it today. And this is the deer. All right, y'all, got two more cooks. Let me get their names. I'm Leonard. Judy. Now, Leonard, uh, what you cooking? Oh, uh, cooking a deer, rabbit, and pork sauce pecan today. Now, what y'all don't know, last year Leonard was in the Black Iron Pot cook-off, and he cooked the potato chips, the homemade potato chips and the sweet potato chips, and took second. So this year he might get first. Now, uh, tell us a little bit about how you cooking this, uh, how you how you going about it. Well, first thing we did, we, uh, we, we, we browned the meat, we got about three pounds of pork, three pounds of deer, uh -huh. uh, two rabbits, and two packs, two pounds of sausage. Yes, and indeed. We, we browned everything and took it out, and then we put the onions in, of course. Uh huh. And uh, we got the onions simmered down, then we started putting our tomato sauce and the diced tomatoes. And gotcha. All the seasonings and stuff. And we're about to put the lid on it and let it sweat a while. So you got everything in the pot? Everything's in it. All right, man. Hello, everyone. I'm Alvin Ray. I have Alvin Ray's Bayou Best Pickles. And uh, I invite y'all to come out. It's going to be a great day, great music, and great food. Um, I created a recipe. I'm in the process of going through LSU to have it marketed. I should be in stores by November. And. Uh, it's real crisp, sweet, but it's not over sweet. It's hot. I have different spices, mild, spicy, and hot. So I invite y'all to come on out. Uh, we will be coming to store soon at Ralph's Supermarket. All right, y'all. I got Mr. Alvin Ray out here. How's hey, it how going? You doing, and you got some help, too. Tammy. Absolutely. Tammy. Tammy. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Alvin has been working on these pickles, y'all, for how long? Uh, two years. Two years. And the name of them is? Alvin Ray's Buy You Best Pickles. Buy You Best Pickles, y'all. And I got to taste some of these pickles. And you got three different flavors, right? Mild, spicy, and hot. Okay. I tasted some of these. And this is phenomenal. This is something that you're going to want to be a part of, these pickles. Uh, tell me a little bit about the flavors or a little bit about what's coming up big for this. Uh, we fixing the, This is fixing to be in the store near you. Absolutely. This is, this is coming. It's coming soon. You, now, you said it's going to be in Ralph's. It's going to be in Ralph's Market, and that's going to be the beginning. Okay. I started with the, the spice, and then I'm also going through LSU. Okay. And uh, through the incubator. So, um, it, it's they, they're talking about November. All right. To be in store. So, it's going to be a good thing. It's uh, it's really a unique pickle, y'all. It's uh, I don't want to call it a bread and butter. It's more like a mom and pop kind of pickle. And, and the key to this... This pickle is uh, shake. 
It's shaking. It's shaking. Shaking taste. Shaking taste. So you the, get all the, the ingredients sediment in of there. The, you shake it around, and you get all those flavors when mm. you get to taste it. Y'all had them. This is a really good pickle. Well, Alvin, I can't well, wait to see them on I, the market. I, me either. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We'll be right back after a few words from our sponsors. Galvez Hardware and Outdoor Cooking is two unique stores in one. The hardware department has everything you need to fix stuff right. The outdoor cooking section cannot be beaten. We have all the latest and greatest gadgets on the market. But also, we keep a large stock of the tried and tested cookware we've all come to love over the years. Coffee and biscuits every morning during the week, cooking demos on Saturdays, and customer service that will help you get the job done. Marlin's Pizza has two great locations, one in Prairieville and one in Santa Mall. Dine in, carry out, or delivery. That's right, y'all. Seafood delivered free to your home or business. Shrimp, oysters, catfish, and frog legs. They also have po' boys, spaghetti, fried pickles, homemade onion rings, salads, and 100% pure beef burgers. Marlin's Pizza Dough is made fresh every day. And this is the only place you can find the La Mex Pizza. And oh yeah, y'all, don't forget about that seafood muffalata. Junior's Meat Market has everything you need when you're going to the camp. Groceries, fresh produce, beer, hoghead cheese, hot or mild, hot cracklings, and ice. Homemade smoked sausage, mild or hot, daily and weekly meat specials. 21 day aged steaks. We can also process your deer. Come on down to Junior's Meat Market and check us out. You're watching Cajun Living and Cooking. I'm O'Neill Parrington and I'm sponsoring Mike Inlow and Jason Taylor and we're cooking El Chili for the Dreams Come True Foundation in Sixth Parish. First place. Hopefully we got a winning pot. Alright y'all, I got another cook here, Kyle Blanchard. Y'all recognize him. How's it going, man? Oh, it's going pretty good. What you cooking today? Got deer sauce pecan. Deer sauce pecan. Good old classic deer sauce pecan. Now, not everybody knows how to cook a deer sauce pecan, Kyle. Let's, let's tell them how you cook a deer sauce pecan. Alright, first thing is, I go ahead and I sear my meat in there, get a good brown to it, uh -huh. pull it out. Then I'll start with a roux, get a roux going. And once it gets dark, good and dark brown, I'll go ahead and uh, put my onions, my celery, and my uh, and my bell peppers. Uh -huh. And then I add a little water to it, get that going, put my rotel, I'll put my tomato paste and my tomato sauce. Yes, indeed. And then uh, got to use the Blanchard's blend. Yes, that's now the Season trick. it up. Oh, that's definitely the uh, secret to my sauce pecan. Now, how long does it take you to cook it? Uh, I'm looking about three hours. About three hours? Right. So you got everything in the pot now? Yes, I got so everything you're just cooking done. cooking it all down That's now. it. I'm letting the root cook out. Good. Now, it, now, Kyle's done won several competitions that I've been to. He's got first place, second place. He done won all kind of stuff. So I got a feeling you're going to see him at the podium. All right, y'all. I got two more cooks. Let's get their names. Mark Babin. Brandon Pasig. What you cooking, Mark? I'm cooking pork and sausage jambalaya. Something I love to cook all the time. That looks really good. Hopefully it tastes as good as it looks. Now, uh, people cook jambalaya all different ways. Why don't you tell me and everybody out there how you cook your jambalaya? Well, first thing I do is I put my grease in my pot and get it hot. And I usually fry my sausage first and then take it out and fry my pork meat. Take it out and then I take some of my grease out and fry my onions down. Put me a bell pepper or two in there and let it cook down with it. Then take the bell pepper out. Yeah. And then add my water back to where I needed to go and scoop the recent grease out of it. Then I bring it back to a good ball and put my rice in it and let it cook. Dang, that sounds like you're uh, 
That sounds good. Now, where are you at right now at this stage? I'm waiting on time. I don't want to cook it too early. I'm going to light it back up about 10, 15 or so. So you're basically marinating in there. That's exactly what I'm doing. And you're watching your time, and then you'll add your rice and get it going. Yeah, once I add my water, get my water level back to where I need it to be, I'll bring it back up to a good ball, add my rice, and stir it down for a certain amount of time until the rice gets good and soupy. Then I'll cover it, shut it down, and let it sit there for so long and steam, because Everybody knows when you cook a jambalaya, you don't cook the rice, you steam it. Right, right. And the trick of cooking the jambalaya is, won't your rice go pop, pop it open. Pop, pop open. it open. Split rice. Split the rice. All right, Mark. Good luck to y'all. Thank y'all for having me, Rodney. Thank you. 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 Thank All right, y'all got two more cooks. Let's get their names. Eugene Singletary. Carl Singletary. What you cooking, Mr. Eugene? Uh, rabbit and squirrel sauce pecan. Woo! Rabbit and squirrel. Yeah. Now, Gotta have them together to make a good combination. Now, not everybody knows about rabbit and squirrel sauce pecan, so he's gonna tell us how he cooks rabbit and squirrel sauce pecan. Well, it's an ancient Chinese secret. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> we well, might have to kill you if we get all the holding. I got you. We might get you to lift the lid, but we can look at it while, while he's talking about it. Yeah, we can stir it and lift the lid and let you look at it. Okay, yeah, now tell us the process. Well, the process, um, I take and brown some onions, bell peppers, uh, green onions, uh -huh. cook those together, and then I put in some uh, small amount of tomato sauce, cook okay. that together. Then I put uh, cook a roux and put some roux in there, and then after it cooks together for a couple of hours, uh, everything marries. Yeah, then I like that, marry. Then I start adding the meat, okay. and I've been cooking it uh, for about four hours now. Okay. So it's starting to get right. I'm noticing that the meat's beginning to fall uh, off the bones. I've seen and, you getting some strings of meat in there. Right, so that's that's good. That's telling me that meat is uh, real tender. Now you serve that over rice or noodles? Uh, rice. Gotcha. In South Louisiana, you've got to have it over yeah, rice. Yeah. Now, uh, you got everything in the pot? Everything's in there now? So yeah, you, uh, we got a little bit of uh, final seasoning that's going to go in towards the end. Okay. I don't want to do that too soon. Gotcha. And then gotcha. We're gonna, um, our rice is nearly cooked. We're gonna serve that over a bed of rice and uh, should be the winning pot. I think so. I, I think, think so. so. I agree with you. All right, fellas, I'm gonna let y'all get back to it and we're gonna check back on y'all. All right, good. Thank y'all. Thank you very much. Hello, my name's Kevin Bush and today I'm doing an award-winning uh, pasta live for the Dreams Come True Foundation. And uh, we got some little, uh, you know, deer, deer sausage in there. It come from Reno down there in Sorrento. And uh, got some, uh, some pork, uh, got that butcher cut down there in Friend Selman. I got a little bit of everything from a uh, little bit everywhere. Actually what I do with mine, I actually put bacon. Really? Uh, I put bacon down there to, to render the grease. Uh -huh. But actually I just leave the bacon in. Yep. That's the secret that I'm letting everybody know. But uh, okay. I get the bacon and then after the bacon, uh, uh, I brown the meat. I, don't, I do, I brown the meat uh, and then uh, we brown the onions. And then, uh, and then, then your greens. Uh, that okay. would be your celery, uh, bell pepper, green onions. I actually put, I do put the green onions in with the uh, with the celery in the beginning. Gotcha. With the, uh, celery and bell pepper. Okay. And uh, now I let it come to a ball. Uh, then once it comes to a ball, I boil it for 10 to 15 minutes, mostly around 10 minutes most of the time. And then, uh, then I add the next process I would be, add the, the water and the stock and then uh, let it come back to a ball and then you put your uh, spaghetti in and then uh, back to ball for another 10 minutes and then uh, you're pretty much done all right you making my mouth water here while you talking about that oh yeah I have some uh, 
uh, some pork, uh -huh. and then uh, I actually got some uh, tasso from Vayons up uh -huh. the road right there, local, uh, Prairieville, Louisiana. I some, see a little uh, bit of bacon uh, in there. And, too, and, right? Actually, yeah, you can see some bacon in there. It's somewhere in there. I can't pick it out. You might have seen it. Gotcha. And then, of course, we have the, uh, you know, your sausage and, uh, Man, and that tasso. Looks, it looks you know. rich, real rich. Yeah, it, it probably is a little richer than, than your normal uh, pasta lies. Gotcha. I like mine. Uh, uh, people like to cook that pasta lies. Some of them do it runny, but I like mine thick. I like a little yeah. thick. Yeah, then comes a little. Uh, I like it a little thick myself. Uh, like you said, it, it should come out a little rich. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Love you, Daddy. The Angler Magazine. Find your outdoors here. Seafood is your one-stop shop for all your seafood, seasoning, sauces, and propane needs. They have local Amy River catfish, $3.99 a pound all year long. Fresh shrimp, Dungeness crab, local frog leg, soft shell crabs, alligator, scallops, live and ball crabs, and cracklings. And don't forget, crawfish season is just around the corner. Always local, never imported, at Hole and DeWall Seafood. Ascension Trolling Motor is owned and operated by Carl Singletary, offering the only Minn Kota warranty service center in Ascension Parish. He not only works on all makes and model motors, but offers pickup and delivery. If you can't take it out of the water, he'll come to you. On-site boat lift, boat trailer repair, small fiberglass work, and gel coats. He sells refurbished motors, parts, and accessories. He's also a certified welder and mechanic. Here at Ascension Trolling Motors, our mission is to keep you fishing. Just when you thought you had the best, there's better. The new Hustler Raptor, heavy duty welded steel deck, professional grade cut quality, premium Kawasaki power, all from just $27.99. The new Raptor series from Hustler, tools, not toys. Come get your Raptor Super Duty today at Gotro's Lawn and Garden in Gonzales. Welcome back to Cajun Living and Cooking. I'm Bully today from Ascension Magazine, and I'm gonna be cooking the best deer sauce pecan you ever tasted. As soon as I get it started, my burner's messing up. Well, you know, a lot of people brown the deer meat down, but I braise it. Oh yeah? And I, that's a little deeper oil, you cook it till it's all clear, then you pour some oil off, and. You make your roux. Uh -huh. The wind kind of caused me some problems today as far as um, getting my roux as dark as I want it. I like to look at it and you can't tell if it's brown or if it's red. <laughs> but it's it's a little red today, but it, it's tasty. Gotcha, gotcha. And now, now you've got everything in the pot yet? Or are you? Oh, everything's in. And uh, I always add a little mushrooms to, to add a little flavor and a little extra moisture in it. And I'm hoping it just cooks down and velvety and smooth and First place. Uh, oh no, I, I'm aspiring to go for last. I mean, if you go for last, you don't have to worry about. I remember that at the rib contest. Oh, that that's was hilarious. Happened before. That's hilarious. I now, mean, what, what y'all don't know, y'all? He's got a book out. Thoughts from Bully. He's also the editor of Ascension Magazine, so he's got a book out. And how many years have you been putting this together? Well, uh, the magazine has been 12 years. Uh, I just I wrote this book last year uh, after having a little bout with cancer. It's kind of on my bucket list. Gotcha. And uh, I'm getting ready to promote it for Christmas and all. And it's the stupidest book you've ever going to read. It is funny, y'all. I've read some of the stuff in here. And if you read this magazine, and that's where they originate, out right. of the magazine. That's correct. Really good. You can buy it at the Galvis Hardware Store, and there's several other places you can get it. Nah, that's correct. Uh, Really good, y'all. Really, really funny. All right, Mike. Well, good luck on this, and I hope to see you at the podium. Well, look, I've already won last place, so uh, I I'm happy. All right, man. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, my name's Lewis Lambert, and I'm here with my brother, Dempsey Lambert. And today we're cooking uh, chicken stew for dreams come true. Ah, 
I started out with a roux and browned my onions, put a little uh, cream of mushroom in there, and uh -huh. cream of chicken, uh -huh. and some green onions and celery, and uh, brown it all down and let the roux cook. Gotcha. You yeah. have everything in the pot now? Oh yeah, everything's ready to go. Oh, shake it, Bobby. Oh, and this is uh, Chad, Chad Benfield, with uh, Holy Bowl Seafood and Benfield's Cajun Beans. Today we're cooking uh, Carballs and Bread. I mean, I mean, first we start we start with the gar balls. We we get the gar in fresh, alligator gar, local, out of Marpaul, uh -huh. Louisiana. Uh, guy, guy brings it to us, already clean, deboned. Uh, we we cut the meat up in you know little small pieces, and we add our seasoning blend to it. Your onions and bell peppers, and a little bit of uh, cayenne pepper, yeah. salt, you yeah. know, good stuff. A couple of potato flakes. Pass it pass it through the grinder, and then make your balls and pre fry them. Uh huh. And then you know from there. You make your gravy. Okay. Just, just your, okay. just your ba basic roux, onions, bell peppers, garlic, green onions. What else we put in there? Put a little Kyle bit of everything. Seasonings, little Kyle Blanchard seasoning. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Kyle Blanchard hooked us up with some seasoning gotcha. to put in there. Gotcha. <laughs> so uh, once we get our gravy thick, then we add the uh, the gar balls in to, to finish cooking for about 30 minutes, and they're they're going to finish cooking and actually get tender. Okay. And and soak in the flavors of the gravy. So it's the I'm gonna tell everybody out here to understand this. You're frying the gar balls on the side, then you're making a gravy and putting the gar balls in the gravy. In, in the gravy, yes sir. Man, this recipe I remember when I was a kid. I had this. I hadn't had it in shoot for 30 years i don't think i've had this yeah that's and, camp uh, cooking oh yeah and, and 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 we're actually cooking over an open uh, open fire today yeah we, we don't have a gas burner or anything out here you know. the main thing is you know with cooking that roux you cook it down for about a couple hours you know let that cook and then you add that gore balls right when you think everything's about ready 30 minutes before you throw them gore balls in and that's gonna finish cooking. yeah yep. and that's gonna give it the flavor that's it yeah. That gar balls gonna yeah, put this, it in there. That's the same. That's the same gar balls that I make at the store, and we we, we sell we sell a bunch of them at, gotcha. at, at hole in the wall seafood. Gotcha. So with the, the key with the fire, if you want to turn it down a little bit, you just crank it up a little. Oh, that that's it, man. Very, very easy. You know, a few cranks. Ah. You get it off. You get it off the heat. You know, if you're if you're running low, you can you can add your logs to it. That's old style. Oh, that's yeah. old style <laughs> cooking right there, bro. Well, I'm gonna wish y'all good luck. All right, Rodney. I hope to see y'all at the podium. <laughs> well, Rodney, looks like we had a real good turnout today for the benefit, for the dreams come true. Man, I was so glad myself to see all the cooks come out and all, you know, all a big turnout. And, boy, I tell you, you couldn't have asked for a better day today, huh? No, no. no we planned this, too. We had put in an order for some good weather. Well, I tell you what, the good Lord looked down on your fart. And, man, I tell you what, I'm really looking forward to next year and hope we got this big of a crowd or better next year. Maybe maybe by seeing all of this, a lot of these cooks will come out next year and have a even better turnout for the Dreams Come True Foundation. Yes, yes. It's, it, you can't ask for better than this. A lot of donations and a lot of good fun to help a lot of kids. Definitely, definitely. We want to send a big thank you out to everybody that's helped out out here today. You know, and I'll be getting back on the DJ booth there just a few minutes to let everybody know we appreciate them, uh, all of their support. Thank you. All right, y'all. Great cook-off going here, but that's all the time we got on this show. So, actually, you're going to have to tune in next week to see who won this Black Iron Pot contest for the Dreams Come True Foundation. We're going to have the winners. We'll have all the taste testing. And thank y'all for watching Cajun Living and Cooking. <laughs>